Experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 182 of Category 5 Technology TV. It is so good to see you. It's Tuesday, March the 15th. Happy St. Patty's Day. Ah. Almost. We're two days off. One of these days, it's going to fall right on a Tuesday night. Yeah, well. But for now, <laughs> I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. Nice to see you. Tonight, uh, we are going to be diving right back into our series on uh, how to develop professional looking websites. Uh, and Krista yeah. is joining us uh, here as a professional graphic designer and going to be helping us with that uh, that feature. So stick around. Tonight we're going to be learning to slice up those images that we were working on last week. Yeah, that'll be new for me today. Yeah? Yeah. That's exciting. We're going to do something really interesting. I was talking to Krista before the show <laughs> and I said, wouldn't it be fun if we took your Photoshop and battled it against the GIMP? So we've got two computers in front of us. We've got two copies of the PSD file. Yeah. A Let's bit of a disadvantage. Wins. I haven't done this before. Because you're so. on the Mac with uh, Photoshop. I know, I know. It's a disadvantage for sure. Uh, Wirecast. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about how, uh, how you can win a copy of Wirecast. That's the, free, uh, that's the software that we use, uh, which you're going to be able to win for free. And it is uh, what we use to broadcast Category 5 TV here. Uh, so stick around. We're going to be talking about how you can help us to, uh, to pick who is going to win that software. And lots more coming up. And uh, Hillary joining us in the newsroom. Hey, Hill. Hey, everyone. Got lots of great, exciting things happening this episode on Category 5 coming up in the newsroom. Hackers pose a very real threat to industries who have become more reliant on technology. New software is now in beta to let you turn your computer into a pogo plug for free. And Microsoft is putting an end to the Zoom. A new Android looks so real you'd be hard pressed to tell he's not human. So stick around for the latest news from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Thanks, Hill. So join us in the chat room, Category 5.TV. We'd love to have you there. Uh, and uh, certainly if you've got an IRC client, you can join irc.freenode.net and join the uh, chat room for Category 5. It would be a good idea. How's your week going? Busy, it's been yeah. a really busy week. Has it yeah. been like busy in a good way or just well, crazy? Or? Yeah, you know, when I'm not bored, it's good. So good busy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yourself? How was your week? I have not been bored. Oh, good. Dealing with DDoS attacks, <laughs> dealing with this and that, distributed denial of service. I'm on the other side. I've I've been on the side where you know our web host has gone down, and you know the site goes down, and so then it's like. You know, you're you're at that end where you're you know contacting tech support and wondering, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And you see, you know, all the posts of people saying, what's going on? Why aren't we getting an update? That, I've been on that side. <laughs> I've never been on the side where I'm the guy who's you know responsible for getting things back up and running and really giving me a new perspective on what it is as as a web host to I guess. to protect your users from things like a, a, a denial of service attack. It's wild stuff. I bet, yeah. A lot of angry customers. No, I, I, people don't generally get angry with me because I'm just... You're just a just, nice, happy, go lucky guy. I explain guy. it in such a way as, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's just hackers that are just, you know, attacking That's your server and stuff. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> I'm working on it. At least at least with, with me, it's like they can get a hold of me and it's, and it's all good. Uh, but one of the things that I learned and thinking about security, people don't realize, like you've got, I've got my iPod Touch, right? And when, when I've set it up with my email, what are you laughing at, John? <laughs> he's like, I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, when I set it up with email, it wouldn't connect with secure certificate. So, okay, well, my mail server doesn't support secure certificate, so just turn it off and it works. Mm -hmm. Now I'm realizing that's a really bad idea. I mean, I know that in theory, right? But in practice, what happened, uh, what I saw happen this week is that, uh, that a friend actually had a device like this. It was the iPhone. Same situation. They set it so that it wasn't connecting through a secure connection to their server. Somebody was packet sniffing on a public Wi-Fi network, which means they're basically listening for open Wi-Fi traffic, 
and they authenticated their email to get their email on their iPhone. So then this person, their hacker, picked up their username and password, and now they've got access to their email account. Very so scary. It's, it's a big eye opener when it comes to that because you don't realize it's like, well, I can change my password or whatever, but damage is done, right? Yeah. Somebody could go in and if you use Hotmail, they could log in and they could change your Hotmail password, and then you're stuck. Yeah, that's Absolutely so scary. Stuck. I've seen that kind of thing happen. So use a secure certificate. Don't connect to Wi-Fi if it doesn't have encryption. Good. Seriously. <laughs> well, because your, your connection to the router, if it's unencrypted, then anyone can pick up that data, such as the Google Street View car, for example. But also some more, more malicious users <laughs> than Google, they could also pick up that data, and you don't want that to happen. I'm going to head over to the chat room. You got the chat room up? I do. Hey, everybody. Yeah, everybody say, oh, they talk about that on Hack5. Look at that. They're talking like <laughs> hacker lingo. Didn't even mean to. But it's natural for you. Yeah. That's what it is. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Greg in Texas. Good guy joining us in the chat room. Uh, Ucrop, uh, Gadwill, Cal Hydro, Agamotto, AS759, and Jot. <laughs> hey there. We see you, Jot. Yep. Join us in the chat room. Really encourage you to do so. I'm hinting, because later on in the show, there might be a little bot that might go into the <laughs> chat room. And if you're not there, then that bot might not know that you're there, there, not there. Or something. Some people know what I'm saying. <laughs> Smile and nod. Gadwell? Shh. Shh. <laughs> okay, email. You've been getting your emails into us live at category 5. Dot TV, D-Man 810 loves Drawabot. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Live at Category5.tv. Got a viewer question here from James Alexander. It says, good evening all. Just bought a Netgear WNDR3700 dual band router, and I was wondering... Is there any 5 gigahertz network equipment out there, like Wi-Fi or PCI cards, or is this technology just for the future, when the equipment becomes available? Love the show, and P.S., Eric is very useful, so keep him. <laughs> Thanks for the comment, James. Uh, Eric, uh, just so you know, he's, um, he's a musician, as you know. He's a hockey-playing musician. But this week, and, and I'm very sorely disappointed that... Uh, Eric's not here for the St. Patrick's Day um, show. Mm -hmm. Because this, this is his thing. He'd be in his element. But everybody knows that. So he is what he calls gigging like crazy this week. So he's playing at uh, all different places. Doing his music thing. So learning all the, uh, or freshening up uh, all the Irish songs <laughs> that he knows. And, you know, you know the type. So cool. he's, uh, he's doing that this week. I hope that he uh, has a good time. I, I'm going to try to get out and see him. We're going to get the itinerary and find out uh, where he's playing this, uh, this week. So he couldn't be here with us tonight. We do miss him. I say that because I know that this is as far in as he's going to watch. So now that, uh, now, that <laughs> now that he's gone. <laughs> now that he's gone. <laughs> Eric. No, I'm just totally playing. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep him around. Uh, WNDR3700 with the uh, 5 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz is 802.11a. So it's uh, up to 54 megabits per second, just like 802.11g. But the difference is it runs in the 5 gigahertz versus the 2.4. So the, the time that you want to use it, 2.4 gigahertz, as you know, is very uh, uh, crowded as far as the frequency goes. So there's not a lot of room on there, and you tend to get a lot of interference. And sometimes you run into trouble with other devices conflicting with your wireless connection. So then you have trouble. and. What do you do? Well, you switch to 802.11a, and you're suddenly at uh, dual the wavelength. So the disadvantage to that, speaking of wavelength, is that the wavelength is a lot smaller, so it's not going to go through walls as well as G. It's not going to uh, get around walls, and it's, it's more of a line of sight kind of thing. You want to be fairly close to the router. You may have a whole different problem with, uh, with 802.11a. But that said, if you're you know in a reasonably small place, and uh, 
got a good signal, then you would actually pick it up better uh, in a scenario where 2.4 is crowded where you are. Downtown metro, you know, too many Wi-Fi signals. Switch it to 5 gigahertz and you'll be good to go. Uh, as far as what devices are su <laughs> supported, there we go. It started. The, it started the uh, cough from talking, talking, talking for 11 minutes straight. Um, the device support, you're going to find that a lot of network adapters, including the ones in your laptop and probably in your desktop computer if you've got Wi-Fi there, you'll see what that device supports. And a lot of them are going to say A slash B slash G slash N, which means it supports those four different wireless uh, frequencies. So if that's the case, if you support A on your laptop, say, then you'll be good to connect. Uh, and you can switch back and forth as you like. <laughs> Whoa. One sec. Needs a break. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Hope that helps. But uh, the answer is, yeah, it's for the now. For the now. But only use it if you've got it. Because it's not going to give us the same quality of signal through walls and across different floors of your house and things like that, depending on your scenario. So, cool. Let's see. Okay, Adge. Adge Randall uh, joins us and sends an email here to live at category5.tv. Says, how do you go live with people? When you had the girls on from Telestream, how do you, A, have them on the air, for one thing, and B, switch back and forth? So interestingly, if you, if you watch that entire episode, you'll learn quite a bit of, about a piece of software from Telestream called Wirecast. You can find out more about it at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. That software is what we use here at Category 5 to change what camera we're using, change the, uh, the lower third if I want to put my Twitter address up, for example, or change cameras. So in a case like when the ladies were on, I could go, oh, and there we go, different camera. So with that, it's Telestream Wirecast. It is a commercial application for Windows or Mac. And uh, I threw that in for you. Yeah, Thanks. Just like that. Yeah, appreciate uh, it. Cat5.tv slash Wirecast is uh, what you want to check out. As far as how we get the ladies on and how we get uh, Hillary on when she's doing the news from school, uh, we have a dedicated computer. I don't know, John, if you can just kind of point the camera down just a little bit so that they can see. There's a computer right in front of us where we actually see Hillary. So here it is here. And this computer. Oh, well, you don't need to show the mess, <laughs> all the wires and the dust, but the monitor above that. See this monitor that's just kind of resting there? We actually see Hillary right here. So, And that was not meant to be an advertisement for IBM. However. Just to be fair, should we maybe do a shot of the Apple? Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. So now, now that John's camera happy, <laughs> he's like, he told me to move. He told me to move the camera. This is awesome. Um, this, this computer runs Skype. So Skype video allows us to bring in guests through the internet. So they install Skype on their system, or they use it <coughs> from their device. Um, you can get Skype installed on your mobile, mobile device, mm -hmm. for example, uh, with my iPod Touch 4. I've got the forward-facing camera. I can just hold it and have it carry a conversation through Skype video. So um, that then goes into this computer. This computer using a product that comes with Telestream's Wirecast called Desktop Presenter. It then streams that video over to our system as if it was a camera. Very much the same way that I'm able to switch over. You know, with Krista being here, I can switch over to her computer. With my computer over here, I can switch over to my computer and go back and forth, and then back to the camera. Nothing to it. So that's all a part of Telestream Wirecast with the addition of an, uh, <coughs> pardon me, another computer running Skype. And that's how, it done, how it's done. Cool. Simple. Thanks for the question. Is that sarcasm? <laughs> Just, you make it sound so complicated. It's do I really? Well. <laughs> that's the opposite of you know, what I'm trying to do. I, I like pictures and colors and You want me to draw you a picture about shapes. <laughs> I'm a, I'm such a good artist that I okay. But that'd that, be good. That I'm square great. is the computer. <laughs> this line here is a wire and that square is the other computer and that's how See, it works. that's better. I'm very visual. Visual Does that work? person. Yeah. That worked for you? Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Always happy to help. That's good. And that was good because we answered the question <laughs> for two different types of people. Those who really want to know, yeah. and those who just want and to make fun of me. People like me, yeah. 
<laughs> cool. Well, I think uh, we can hop right into our feature. We've got, uh, uh, again, <laughs> this is a pretty big feature that we're doing with the web development. We're trying to squeeze in as much as we can uh, over the next uh, several weeks. Uh, and I uh, hope that you're enjoying it. And, and we welcome your questions in the chat room, li uh, category5.tv, uh, the ca category5 chat room on Freenode, uh, or drop us an email live at category5.tv to get those questions in for Krista. Cool. Um, actually, before we get into the feature, I'll just uh, remind you that uh, Wirecast, uh, just because we're kind of on that topic still, uh, we're giving away a free copy. It's worth $450. And uh, what I'd get you to do, if you jump up to, uh, to our website, category5.tv, click on Interact on the menu, and then go down to Wirecast Contest. And from this button there, you're going to see all the entries that, uh, that have been entered for the Wirecast Contest. This is the giveaway. And you're going to have your chance to vote for your favorites. Read the instructions up at the top here and find out how you can vote. And uh, those votes are going to be taken into account when we decide who the winner uh, is for that free copy of Wirecast. Very cool. cool. So please do uh, go through that process. It's very, very easy. Category5.tv, click on, click on Interact and Wirecast Contest. And good luck to those who are uh, eligible. All right. So. Welcome to part two <laughs> of the Category 5 TV tutorials on uh, how to design a website. Krista Wells joins us tonight. Hello. I'm Robbie Ferguson. Nice to have you here. Um, so last week we, well you, I was kind of yes. here, but Super fast. you created the, uh, yeah, the design that you've got there. Yeah. And you make great things happen. Look at that. Very cool. <laughs> so that's you over on, on your Mac. It is. This is me over on Linux, so let's see what we can do here. Krista sent me the PSD file, so here's comp.psd. This is the same file that you're working with, right? Mm-hmm, exact same file. All right, let's bring it up in GIMP. Okay. There we go. There's me in the GIMP. There's you in Photoshop. Now, just, just for the viewer's sake, how much does Photoshop cost you? Roughly a thousand dollars esque, right? It's somewhere in that range. You you can get a student discount if you're going to school. Yeah, <laughs> that helps. So you took advantage of that. Okay, so <laughs> with the student discount, how much did it cost? Uh, well, the so the suite, the CS4, or CS5 is about five hundred. Five hundred bucks. That gets you image ready, Photoshop, Illustrator, oh. Dreamweaver, Flash, Bridge. I said image ready. I meant Illustrator. Image ready is going way back in the <laughs> in design. Yeah, we okay. don't we don't use that anymore. Okay, so that's a, so. It, can you buy just Photoshop? You can. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of times it's worth it just to get the the package. Yeah, it's easier to switch uh, back and forth with vector, the proper right? yeah with the proper programs. Okay, I'm gonna bring up the web browser here. We're just gonna go somewhere where we can buy Photoshop. I don't know why I'm curious. I just I just want to know. <laughs> Photoshop. Oh, here we go. Photoshop. I know it's CS5, but let's buy it. Okay, select country. I'm in Canada. Uh, select which store. Should we go with the educational pricing? Let's do that. Might as well. Just because that's going to be the best deal going, right? So this is for students or faculty. Save up to 80%. Well, that sounds great. 80% of what? Shop the student store. Okay, let's see. So we're looking at uh, Adobe Photoshop CS5. Super fast web design <laughs> there, by the way. And of course they've got, it, it's, it's largely because they're using Flash. Why would Adobe use Flash? All right. Okay. Creative Suite, Creative Suite, Creative Suite, Creative Suite. Adobe Photoshop Extended Student and Teacher Edition. Okay, so the cheapest version I can find here is this CS5 Extended Student and Teacher Edition. Just Photoshop. It says from 199. Okay. So US 199 dollars. 
So that's the cheapest <laughs> I can possibly get, right? As, well, that's what, yeah. that's what it is. So I'm just gonna show off now. No, I'm not showing off. <laughs> no, that's not what this is. No. Oh, that website loaded so fast. <laughs> You invited me just to make fun of Krista. The make fun of Krista show. No, it's not. I'm not. <laughs> when did I say, oh, look at you didn't have look to. at Krista? She's well, slow. Implication. I said their website. Okay, here, look. <laughs> Let's just say we're on Windows. Okay. Whoa. Okay, I'm in English. Wait a minute. But wait, I didn't even have to pay. And it wants to give me the full version of the software. Let's go back and see what, what we have here. Okay, go back to gimp.org. And let's say we want to get it for Mac OS. Oh, and look, it's also available for Unix. Photoshop doesn't work on Unix. How convenient. Mac OS 10. Okay, here we go. The GIMP on Mac OS 10. Let's see how much this one costs. Oh, I bet it's free. <laughs> You're catching Did on. Did I jump the gun? Was You're that catching on. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah, I get it. GIMP, just so you know, <laughs> stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. Compatible with Snow Leopard. Leopard, Tiger. Going way back. So let's say we got Snow Leopard. Oh, that looks strikingly similar. A DMG file. Okay. <laughs> you you kind of know what I'm saying, I, right? Okay, I so think I caught on. Unless you want to draw out a picture for me, that might help. I don't want to say <laughs> that Photoshop... I'll, I'll draw a picture. <laughs> it just might help. The same. He's really putting his skills to use here. There. There's a picture for Krista. She asked for it. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say that Photoshop and GIMP are identical. They're not the same product at all. They're not. They're, they're similar in their design. They're similar in what they can do. There's a program called GIMP Shop, which is another version of the GIMP that looks a lot like Photoshop and uses a lot of the same hotkeys. So it's easier for someone such as Krista to migrate over to the free product. Not that I would. But the GIMP is absolutely free. So if you want to get into photo manipulation, if you want to be doing things like we're doing uh, tonight and when we do graphic manipulation on the show, why not use a free piece of software that's available for download at GIMP.org. And this is going to allow me, here I am on Linux, right? Looks kind of like Mac OS. This is Linux. It's also free. Ubuntu.com. Ubuntu Linux is a free distribution or a free uh, operating system for your computer. And it works on PC, so it's cheaper hardware free operating system versus the Mac. Here's Photoshop. Fair enough. All right. So not the same product, <laughs> but we want to just kind of emphasize that there's a big difference because we're, we're saving 200 bucks bare minimum if we were a student. Okay? As so, a student, yeah. That's a really yeah. great deal. But bucks. as a professional, I really like the you know, the Photoshop programming and everything. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And it does have its advantages, and I, I do tend to use both professionally because there are times when I absolutely need Photoshop. I totally can admit that. She's trying to make me feel better now, that's all. <laughs> I am. I don't ever use Photoshop. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the only time I use Photoshop is when you send me When files. you're here, yeah. Because yeah. all your crazy Photoshop layer masks yeah, and things. Yeah, it's me. No, I'm just kidding. going to add more next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we are in the GIMP, and what we're going to do is kind of assess how we want to work with this file. Basically, as last week, Krista went through and, and uh, creatively came up with the design and, and um, decided, <coughs> pardon me, and explained how she decides how to build the website as the person who's going to be slicing it, which may be the same person if you ever do the slicing yourself, um, 
the person who's slicing needs to have a bit of an idea as to how they want to to do this. Oh, look at that. That's the Mac. That's Linux. Okay. <laughs> so what I mean by that is we've got this gradient background. <coughs> so this is a red that changes shades of red. If you're not too sure, what you can do is you can grab your, and you can follow along with this, Krista, if you like. Okay. In Photoshop. Fo just following. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We should do a split screen. That's embarrassing, <laughs> maybe. So what I've done is I've grabbed the little Doppler here. It's a color picker tool in uh, GIMP. And uh, if I click on my foreground color, actually click on the Doppler there, and watch this HTML notation there as I click on this red. It is B4CBE5. What I want to do here, I'm going to change layers to the background layer. And now do that again. <coughs> There we go. So A9000, okay? If I click somewhere else, see the number is, that's A9000 as well. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm laughing, just thought of a funny joke from earlier. Okay. So now click down here, it changes to 81, 810,000. That's an HTML reference for the color. So you see that it's actually a, a gradient, there's different colors here, A0000, versus down here is 8,000 or 800,000. So what that tells us is that the gradient is not all one color of red. So what we need to first decide is how we're going to work with our background when we're doing this. So what we want to do in Photoshop is maybe zoom in to about 2,000. Percent. Yeah. So and then go down to the very, very bottom. One of the things that we need to do when we're slicing a website is we need to make sure that things are fluid. If the site becomes taller, we need the gradient not to have a, a cutoff point at the bottom of the gradient. You don't want this thing to look like a square on a white page. You want that gradient to seem to flow. So what you'll do with, at that zoom level is use your Doppler and get that HTML character code, the color code of the very, very bottom, so as close to the lower edge as you can possibly get. Because that's going to be, at this zoom level, it's going to be like a very, very big pixel. So that's the 840,000, right? Yep. So if I bring it up in the GIMP, let's see if I get the same thing. So I've got my Doppler tool, color picker. I'm going to zoom in, go down to the very bottom, and grab that bottom color, because that's where our gradient uh, basically ends. And I think I actually got a little closer to the edge because I'm getting 82,000. I think you might have been up just a little bit. But regardless, that's, that's going to be pretty close. So right down at the very, very bottom here, I've selected the color and it's 8,000. That's this really deep red. So the reason we want to do that is now we've got that color in our clipboard, and now if you watch, if I were to zoom out of this now, okay, and if I were to resize this image, the canvas size, which is exactly what's going to happen on the web if you get a page that's super long, okay. Now what's going to happen in the background there, once I fill that with this particular color, just to kind of give you an idea. Is that the gradient is not going to look like it breaks off. You can't see a line there where the gradient stopped. If I didn't do it that way, if I didn't pick that proper color and there was white behind it, you'd have the bottom of the website would basically look like that. So I've got my color. It's 8,000 or 800,000. And that's what we're going to use as our background color when we get into CSS, so the actual coding okay. of the site. But we need to know that off the get-go because we need to actually create the background gradient file. Um, so we're going to come back to that in just a couple of moments. Hillary has uh, got the news for us, and uh, we will be back right after, uh, after we hear from her. Stick around. From the Category 5.tv news, 
While we continue to become more and more reliant on technology, the threat of hackers causing serious damage increases. Security experts who are concerned about the state of the power industry's distribution system say systems have been infiltrated and Canada's smart grid is vulnerable. Doug Westland, president of cybersecurity company N Dimension Solutions, says, We certainly know from our customers that their systems have been infiltrated. It's been going on for quite some time. Mr. Westland expressed that he is unable to reveal who these customers are, no doubt for security reasons. However, we do know that Westland's company is a part of the research project sponsored by the United States Department of Energy to protect the emerging digital smart grid against cyber attacks. The most worrisome change as of late involves millions of wireless smart meters being installed in homes and businesses. These meters provide wireless two-way communications with local utilities, which link to transmission operators and power generators, and are very and uh, are a very real potential target for hackers. Governments are starting to step up to the plate and increase their awareness and action surrounding cybersecurity. Cloud Engines Inc., the makers of PogoPlug, have announced a new PogoPlug software, which will allow users to essentially turn their own computer into a PogoPlug connected device with no need for additional hardware. And this software is now available to a limited group of interested beta testers. With this new software, users can access their files securely from anywhere in the world through an internet connection from virtually any device. If you want to have access to your desktop computer's documents from your iPad or other device, for example, no problem. If you want to share your family photos with extended family, no problem. The new software will essentially work just as if you had a Pogo Plug device, giving you the ability to access or share your files through a web-based interface, mobile app, or even a mounted hard drive from anywhere in the world. The new Pogo Plug software is available for Mac and Windows with a Linux version in development. Oh boy! Users who would like to take advantage and uh, for a test run can participate in the free open beta by visiting cat5.tv slash pogo beta. Bloomberg is reporting that Microsoft has finally decided to put an official end to its Zoom media player line. A person familiar with the decision has informed them that Microsoft will not be putting out any new hardware in the line and will henceforward focusing on integrating Zoom functionality with the Windows Phone 7 platform. From the Intelligent Robotics Lab at Osaka, Osaka University and the imagination of every Star Trek fan in the universe, an amazingly realistic looking android is getting a lot of people excited. Some say the Geminoi DK, designed by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguru and fashioned it to look like Professor Henrik Scarf. Oh dear, oh, you guys are going to kill me. Henrik Scarf of Aalborg University in Denmark is even more lifelike than Brett Spinner's data character, which may actually be true. If Geminoi DK were sitting at a coffee shop reading a newspaper, I think you'd be hard pressed to tell it's not a real person. Until that is, he smiles or moves his head in a quirky robotic way. The Geminoid DK is going to be used for researching emotional affordances in human robot interaction, the novel notion of blending presence as well as cultural differences from different continents in the perception of robots. You can get these full stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru and our wonderful community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hilary Rumble. Thanks, Hill. That's crazy. I wouldn't believe it. Crazy. I still don't believe it. She said spinner. Brent Spinner. Nobody else in this room, people understand what I'm what I'm talking about. You don't, you don't even know what I'm no, saying. No, it goes. I smile. She's not one of us. <laughs> Brent Spiner. I'm Brent Spiner, the uh, the gentleman who played Data, who also incidentally watches the show um, at Brent Spiner on Twitter. Nice to have you here. Okay, so moving along. This is Category 5 Technology <laughs> TV, and you'll find us online at Category5.tv. I truly do think that's pretty awesome. And Android. 
wicked. It is. <laughs> sure is. Okay, so we are looking at uh, part two of uh, developing a website, and Krista and I are actually slicing up the design that uh, she did last week and basically getting it set up so that we can turn that into an actual functional real website. At this point, it's really just a mock-up. It's just a pretty picture, that's yeah. it. It's something that we would send to a customer and say, here's the look of the website, what do you think? Mm -hmm. That gives us a chance within Photoshop or the GIMP to make changes to the design, change the, where the items are positioned or what menu items there are. It's, uh, it's really, <coughs> it's just a graphic representation of what the website's gonna look like. At this point, we're assuming that the, the client or, or us, if it's our own website, we've said, yeah, this looks great. This mm -hmm. is exactly what we want. Um, so we're gonna actually work with that. So looking at my computer here, and Krista's got this up in Photoshop as well. So I'm working in the GIMP. Krista's working in Photoshop. I'm working for free. She's working for thousands. <laughs> okay, so. Just slip that in. Just throw that in there, yeah. Happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way. <laughs> Two days off. I'm Robbie Ferguson. Okay. <laughs> so with this, we've got the background color. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna jot this down because we are gonna need this next week when we get into actually coding this website. My color is eight thousand. Uh, eight hundred thousand. That's a hexadecimal number that corresponds with the RGB or red, green, blue color that we've chosen there. That's the red and hexadecimal means uh, it's ready for uh, HTML, for coding for the web, uh, for CSS. So we can set that as our background color and it's gonna match exactly to that. Um, Photoshop tells you if it's a web safe color, which is kind of a cool feature of Photoshop. Do you wanna bring up the color Doppler there and, and just tell me if, uh, if it shows? Oh, well so if we you can change go it to 800,000, and I'll show you what, uh, what it does there. So 800,000, mm -hmm. and if you, Look right here at the top, there's a little explanation point, and it shows us that that is not actually a web safe color. If you click on it, it's going to change to the a closest. similar color, which is web safe. And that is what? 7F1418. Seven seven okay, so let's see in the GIMP how different that is. Web safe colors are not as big of a problem as it used to be. See, that's, not, that's nowhere close. I guess on the stream you can't really tell that. I can tell that visually. Yeah, it's more of a pink than a red. It really is. So I'm gonna stick with 8,000. Typically, when we're creating the mock-up, we might try sticking with ending the gradient on a web safe color. So when we're selecting the colors, we could, if we want to make it easier for the guy who's slicing it. <laughs> Why you would might, you want to do, do that? In a case like this where it's not web safe, what I might do is I might actually choose a color that is web safe. Okay, and colorize that. That's my background color now. Use a square marquee, pardon me, and feather that. Let's start with 10 pixels. And go like that. Create a new layer, transparent. Remember this is a feathered marquee, right? So now if I fill that, what a feather means is that uh, the, oh, that was my background color, the edge of that uh, marquee is not a perfect square. It's actually got a little bit of a feathering to it, kind of like a blur on the edges without, uh, without actually having to blur it. Sorry, I'm talking and trying to find fill. <laughs> there we go. So now if I put that above, And I can, cr I can set that up in such a way that the, I might want more than a 10 feather. I want, let's say, 35. This is just one option. I'm not gonna do this in this case because it's such a, the color is, is so far off that we're just gonna stick with it. But I wanna show you what you can do to fix that edge. Zoom sometimes does that to me. So I can move that, see what I've done, is I've created another gradient at the bottom which merges the non-web safe color into a web safe color. Nice and clean. So that's a possibility. In this case, we're not actually going to do that. We'll pretend that we've got a web safe color and that we, or that we don't care or something like that. <laughs> it's all good. The other option 
In a case like this, we've got a non-web safe color at the base. Here's a really quick option. And this one's going to surprise you. 800,000. And there's no right or wrong way to, to do this. It's really, you're going to choose every time you do it. But what we need to do is we need to have this clean. We need to have a web safe. Easiest way to do that, create a new layer. First of all, let's, let's canvas size this. We're going to go canvas size. We're going to set it to something absurd that nobody's going to ever have. <laughs> We're going to set it to 15,000 pixels high. So now our image actually looks like that with the website way at the top. If I create a new layer and I fill that layer with my background color, which is the non-web safe color, okay. Now what happens is we've got something where it's going to be the perfect color. It's not web safe, but it's okay because it's going to be an image on the background. So now you say, okay, well that's, uh, what did I say, 15,000 pixels high. Yeah. That's going to be huge. But what we do now, as part of our slicing, and always keep your PDF file, don't overwrite it, is take that and we're going to go image canvas size because this is a vertical only gradient. There's nothing horizontal that changes. So I'm going to set this to a pixel width of 5 pixels, which is going to actually crop that and it looks like it disappeared. If I zoom way in or push 1 to see it, there's my actual gradient. Okay, So it's like that. It starts up there, goes all the way down for 15,000 pixels. It's never going to actually run into anything. So let's save that. Let's throw it on my desktop. I'm going to call this a JPEG. reason for it is because it doesn't need a transparency. It's just a flat, flat file. We want it to be as small as possible. So we're going to go with a JPEG. So let's go. We're going to give it a, a logical name. I've called it body underscore BG dot JPG. Save that. In the GIMP, choose your quality. 85 is the default. It's fine. And now we've got this file, which is that background color, that background gradient. Okay? And it's huge. But if we look at the file size, because it's only 5 pixels wide, you'll notice it's 7.3K. It's actually very, very Keeps small. It down. Yeah. yeah. Anything, basically images for web, you want them to be in the sub you know, if it's a big image, you want to try to keep it down around 50 to 80K, the very, very high end, depending on. But we have, you, you basically use common sense and realize that the bigger the site is, the longer it's going to take to load. And so you don't want it to be over the top huge. So, okay. So you, you can easily do that on the Mac. I could, yes. You could. And, and, that, and that makes sense because now when our website is there, it's not going to, it's not going to over, like it's, there's not going to be a cutoff on that gradient, okay? So that's our first slice. I'm going to reopen that PSD because remember, we, we never overwrite that file. So I've got my first slice. I'm going to create a folder on my desktop here where I'm going to put it. It's going to be my website. I'm going to cut that image, the first slice that we made. I'm going to create a folder, all lowercase, called images. So on my desktop, I've created this folder called website. And I've got a folder in that called images, and I've cut that to my clipboard, that image. There's my first image. Okay. So now, looking at the rest of the site, Krista, we've got the logo, okay? which what we'll want to do is we'll want to actually have that as a transparent item, because we don't want to have to worry about aligning it perfectly with the gradient. We don't want to have a JPEG, because then we've got a flat image with the background color. Like We wouldn't want that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer that has my logo, which is right there. If I turn it off and on, I can see that the logo disappears. Hit Control A. I'm not sure what your select all is on the Mac. Oh, it's just uh, Command A. Command A. Yeah. So if you that what I'm so doing? if you select your logo layer, uh, and obviously you have the master files for the logo, and that's fine too. But from this, we're working in high enough resolution. This is why we want to build our mockups in high res. So we don't have to go back and redo the entire mock-up again with high-res images. Mm -hmm. Always do it in high-res. So with a control A, it's selected that logo, and I can go control C or command C probably to copy it to my clipboard. And then in the GIMP, I'm going to go edit, paste as new image, and I've got a perfect transparent version of the logo. Okay? So because it's transparent, I want to save that as a ping 
which is going to maintain that transparency. I'm going to again put that in web site images, and I'm going to call this. We want to be search engine friendly. So, what was it Aspire? Aspire logo. Um, it was Aspire Place, wasn't it? Um, yes, Aspire Place. Okay, logo dot ping. We're giving it a logical name because one, it's easier for us to find when we need to actually add it to our site, but also it allows the search engines to index that as the Aspire Place logo. So once we get submitted to search engines, which is going to happen further on in the series, uh, but we need to plan for that. We need to make sure that our site is search engine optimized and ready to be indexed by the, by the search engines. Okay, so you've got, have you got that file all set up as well on your Mac? You've got a logo? I have a logo. Okay. <laughs> So you, you follow along and then... I'm trying. Okay. Oh, is, is I'm the good with winning? I'm you have the logo saved? And I have the logo saved. Okay, perfect. And remember that because it's copied from our mock-up, the dimensions of this logo are exactly as they would be on our mock-up, 162 by 58. Perfect. So now, you see these menu items. These are all fake. Don't get deceived by these. These are not the set menu items. I get this all the time. Do you get this? Where a client says, well... I think we need to change about us to about. Oh, all the time. And yeah. you're saying, no, this is just the mock-up. That's not a real menu. That's just <laughs> we put that there so that you can see what it's going to look like when we put a real menu there. Yeah. We put this lorem ipsum text on the page so that you can see what the text is going to look like. But it's not the real text. You don't need to tell us, you know, said it page to doesn't yeah, make no any sense. No one can read that. <laughs> that's all part of the mock-up. So one of the things we need to do is just get rid of it all. So that's text that we're going to get rid of. That's text that we're going to get rid of. Okay, So we can get rid of all the mock-up stuff that we simply don't need by turning off the layers. Okay, So now, and I've already got my logo, so now I end up with something like that. I've got my background, so I'm done with that. Okay, So really, the only elements that we still have left here I am on the GIMP, and Krista's following along in Photoshop, doing the exact same thing. So now we need to have our different layers here. So this here is predominantly a color. So we'll get to that, but it's going to be a color, essentially, with a little arrow pointing down at the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to turn off my feather, because I had that turned on on my Select tool from earlier. And I'm going to grab the guide that uh, Krista has set up here with my marquee. It's, you see that the GIMP snaps to those guides. And I'm actually going to... The mock-up doesn't have... Things don't have to be exact to the mock-up because I noticed that the guide is just a little bit off from like maybe at one pixel. So that's, that's fine. So now I'm going to select the wood grain layer and I'm going to copy that and then edit, paste as new image, or in Photoshop, file new image. And it's going to automatically set your proportion. So now I've got this wood grain, which is exactly proportionate to what it is that uh, is going to go at the top of the website. And Krista's following along on Photoshop as well. So she's actually had to paste that into a new image in Photoshop, whereas I could just edit, paste as new. So I'm going to save that. That's my wood grain for the top. One of the things about wood grain that you should know is that it's got a lot of intricacy to it, so it, it can end up being a pretty large file. Mm -hmm. Again, there's no transparency necessary here, so we are going to work with a JPEG. So we're going to try with this. I want to see how large the file is going to be if I set it where I would like it to be, which is about 85% uh, quality. So I'm going to call this um, wood grain bg.jpg. Again, I'm saving it in my web design or website slash images. Flatten the image, save it as 85, and uh, let's go. Pardon me, see how that is? How big's the file on your system at 85%? Oh, you're going way down. I have to. She's taking it down to quality three. Well, it's at giving a, you 78K at, a, yeah. at only six, yeah. so 60%. Mine turned out at 85% to be only 64.5K. So what you want to try, Krista, is instead of Save As, on Photoshop, go File, Save for Web. Don't even save know for web and devices. 
Just down oh, a little bit, right okay. there. Yeah. And now it's automatically selecting GIF, so change that to JPEG. And now you'll see that the file size down at the lower left, 76.1. So now grab the quality slider, and you can slide that down right here, top right. And you can actually see how that's going to impact your file size, as well as the quality of the output. So that's pretty good. Essentially what you'd want to do is go down as far as you can without completely losing the quality of the file, without losing the detail, because you don't want it to look bad. But at the same time, this is a background image, and there's going to be stuff on top of it mm -hmm. that is going to be really what you're looking at. Um, so for me, 64K is too big. So I'm going to save again. I'm going to overwrite. And I bring my quality down to 70. Double click on it, see how I like the quality. It's fantastic. And at this point, it's only 40K. That's a, that's a bit more reasonable, especially considering it's a wood grain. How are you doing over there in for, uh, Photoshop? Oh, we're good. 41K for me, and the quality is 70% quality. The wood grain is pretty crystal clear. And how, f how large is the file size? Uh, I believe about? it was 33. 33? I could keep going. I'm at 70%. Oh, 37. 37? Okay, so we're pretty close. I'm 41. But I've got 70% quality. How low do you have to go? Uh, I think mine was like 40%. Mine okay. was pretty low. Right. All right. So now I've got that file ready to go. And uh, that's going to be our background for the top area. So we can close that out, go back to our mock-up, and I don't need that wood grain anymore. One of the things I, I got to do is I got to get these cool uh, Polaroids that Krista's created. So we're going to get rid of all this stuff because that's all just Im uh, colors. These are just colors. The white stuff, we're going to use a div. We're not going to use an image. And I'm going to go Control A. And this time it's a little bit different. I've got the Krista, we'll just get rid of that blue area as well because that we're going to use a, a div. Uh, as well as that. So here I am in the GIMP. There's Krista in Photoshop. Uh, control A or Command A to copy all, uh, select all. And this time I'm not going to go copy because that's only going to copy the selected layer, which is only the picture. I want to get everything. So I'm going to copy visible or copy merged in Photoshop, I suppose. So now that I've got that in my clipboard, Krista's got that in her clipboard. Let's paste it as a new image. Again, I'm going to go edit paste as new. Krista's going to create a, a new image and then paste it onto that canvas. Oh, and we didn't get a merged clipboard. So go back to your, your master file there and make sure when you copy, go edit, copy merged. There you go. So now create a new file again. It won't be that one because that one's got the wrong dimensions. Is it still just giving you the Yeah, that that's one? all it's doing. Okay, go back to your... So uh, now I think what's happening... Oh, okay, because you're, you've are you got a marquee around just that image. If you do a Control A, now you've got... Oh, you just want the whole board. Yes, oh, okay. she just had the wrong uh, marquee there. So it was copying the merge. But Okay, so now paste that into a new, new image. There we go. Okay, so now again, this has got to be a ping, right? Yours is coming up as... It's got a white background, so you need to get rid of that white background. There you go. And then export that as a ping, which is going to be a larger file because it's got that transparency. Here I am in the GIMP, and you'll notice that I also got a bunch of space over here. So in the GIMP, I can just go right-click, Image, Auto Crop Image, and it automatically sucks in the sides. That's one thing that Photoshop is lacking that uh, the GIMP is totally awesome at. I'm going to save that image, and we're going to call this the Polaroids. Polaroids. No breaching of copyrights intended. <laughs> or registered trademarks. Okay, polaroids.ping. Reason we go with ping again is because this has got a transparency. So we need to be able to put this on top of the rest of our website so that what's behind it can actually shine through. Okay, so you're at that point in uh, Photoshop as well. Yep. I'm going to save it with a compression level of 9 in the GIMP. 
Ping being a lossless format, it's going to be very high quality even at high compression. There's my ping. And uh, it's, it's quite large. That's showing me as 167.7K. How are you looking? Uh, we are 299. 299. So mine's about half the size of yours. But they're both too big for internet. So next week we're going to come back to that. We're going to compress down that, uh, that polaroids.ping file uh, on both. Well, if you're, if you're here, we can look at it on the Mac. If you're not, then we'll definitely look at it uh, <laughs> uh, on Linux as well. But you can kind of get an, imp an impression for how we're able to do a lot of the same things mm -hmm. between Photoshop, the commercial software, and the GIMP, on, uh, which is free on a free operating system, which is Ubuntu. Do you get the sense that I'm plugging the fact that free is actually That's really good these days? It's not like 10 years ago where free meant you're sacrificing quality and, and getting you know, a knockoff product. And now, these days, Got it. thanks to community, Got it's, it. it's a fantastic thing. So we're going to be uh, looking at uh, actually taking those slices because we've actually sliced up that whole website now. There's our, there's our actual mock-up as a sliced website. That's it. That's it. We've got our logo. Right, which is a transparent ping on a white background it's being displayed, so we can't really see it because it's white text. We've got our background image, which is that thing there. That's going to be the gradient. We've got the Polaroids, which we're going to shrink down next week. And we've got that guy right there, our wood grain. So those are really the only images that we need to get started with the website to make it look like your mock-up. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be using CSS. Uh, as well as HTML and PHP in order to actually turn that into a real functional working website along with some cool little JavaScripts and anything else we need to do to make that work. Cool. This is Category 5 Technology TV and you'll find us online www.category5.tv and you know I tease the viewers to get into the chat room and, and you definitely want to do that. Pogoplugs brought out some really cool software, but I'll tell you the truth, the hardware still has some features that are not going to be available in the software. Uh, in, and you know, I can't go into too many details because it is still in beta, but the hardware is still, like that's the highest end that you can get with Pogoplug. So you want to check this out. The Pogoplug Pro is available. Uh, we're giving away two of them tonight. I think we've got time to, you know, why not just give away <laughs> some Pogoplugs at the end of the night? Very cool. Hope you've had fun tonight. It's been just a blast. You have fun? I had a, yeah, I had lots of you fun. You were going to say a blast. I was, and I that realized he said word. it. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. I'll make a list of new but words. But I still said them first. Yeah. Write a song about it? <laughs> yes. When Eric's here, we'll ask him to write a song about it. That's no, okay. It's, it's previously. <laughs> it's probably a country song already, John. Probably is. Get in the chat room, category5.tv. <laughs> Drawabot is there for you. <laughs> Typos are so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Here we go. Good luck, everybody. These are the members who are joining us in the chat room. We're going through your names. Drawbot is uh, picking out two of you. Let's see who would like to win a pogo plug. Secret number tonight. Pick four numbers for me, Krista. Between. Uh, just pick just pick a number that is four characters long. Any number. Four characters long. Yeah. Seven two eight six. Seven two eight six. That's your secret code, Artie Blair and Popey. Congratulations on winning a Pogo Plug Pro. What you need to do is send us that code by email live at category five TV. The code that Krista just pulled out of the air. You'll have a Pogo plug on its way. Uh, send us your name, uh, real name, your mailing address, your phone number for the shipping company, as well as that code, and it will be on its way. Have a fantastic week, everybody. It's been so great having you here. Great having you here again. Oh, it was good nice to, to be see here. You. Yeah, yeah lots of thank fun. you. See you at Category5.tv and follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash Category5TV. See ya.